There are many thousands of billboards just in Los Angeles that are non-permitted, that are illegal. The company that erects the illegal billboard is making money. They don't really face any consequences because they have the ability to tie up our court system so as not to be punished for it. Graffiti artists, on the other hand, have very little resources and they get slapped with a felony. I always wanted to paint canvas as a child and billboards in itself is a giant canvas. You know, it's 60 feet long by 20 feet tall, so of course any artist would visually want to choose something that size without having to pay the price to paint it. When going about painting billboards, that was my first option. Later on I saw the reaction I was getting from painting billboards and I decided that it's for a bigger cause and especially hearing about many companies that are putting billboards up illegally, I look at it as like I'm the vigilante or the voice of the people where it's like we're taking back our public space and changing to what we want to see. This is our city, you know, we pay to live here so we don't have to pay to see like a giant ad of a man in underwear advertising Hanes or something, you know. It's our choice because it's, it's our realm. I remember one of the first pieces of graffiti that I noticed was a culture jammer had taken a camel billboard and changed the word camel to cancer. It kind of changed my whole thought about what graffiti was. Seeing what the culture jammers had done was inspiring because as it is, I'm forced to constantly look at someone's commercial pitch telling me to buy something and here was some people that decided, hey, I'm tired of this message. I, I don't want to buy this. I actually want to tell you about what's bad about this product and we don't get to see that. Being um, a cultural jammer or a billboard liberation artist wasn't my first goal per se, but over time I saw the reaction that I was getting and that it was honing in that type of audience. So I'm gonna continue to play off of that and just push myself to just do different things that no one's ever seen before. Billboards, in my mind, inspire graffiti. If you go back into the origins of graffiti in the uh, early 60s, at the time you saw that billboards were littering our highways and, and destroying the landscape, the view that we were used to before media proliferated across our country. And at the same time, in the city, with so many billboards and logos everywhere in your face, it's only natural that a kid is gonna go, hey, I wanna have a logo up too. It's a rush to have your logo up in the cityscape amongst all these corporations and money interests that have their message out there. It's only gonna inspire other people that wanna get their message out as well. If anything, I'm doing as a favor, changing them from being just a bland advertisement that normally cares about to then switching it around to something that you know is interesting. I chose to follow that path and play off of the recognition I was getting and it's been helping me out a lot as an artist and for my career. What's remarkable about his art is that he will take the billboard and he'll twist up a, a title to say his name or he'll, he'll hit the billboard with his art and combine the artwork on the billboard with his graffiti. You may not even notice that he hit it. It's, it's that integrated with the artwork on the billboard, which is genius. It's, it actually, in my opinion, it, it could become something that the, the billboard advertisers would want.